We continue here to follow this developing story involving former doctor Robert Newlander, who will get a new trial on charges he murdered his wife and tried to cover it up. The state's highest court today agreeing with a lower appeals court ruling that Newlander did not get a fair trial based on juror misconduct. News Channel 9's Jeff Kulikowski joins us now. Jeff, you've been following this case mm -hmm. extensively for us. You've got the decision there yep. in your hands. Yep. And after reading yep. it over, what have you learned about juror misconduct and how it seems to be you know, much more than originally thought. Yeah, much and Rod and Christie, I'll tell you what, it's it's not long, it's barely six pages, but I got through it pretty quickly. It's very pointed. And what surprised me the most is the extent to which they say juror 12, John Lorraine, went to cover up her texting. They say these were not a few innocent, misinterpreted messages. When you read this decision, it's on our News Channel Line app. The Court of Appeals, very clear about that. It's a case that's captivated much of central New York for about five years now. The prominent doctor and community member arrested and later found guilty of killing his wife in their DeWitt home and then covering it up to look like she slipped and fell in the shower. A jury finds Robert Newlander guilty of murder in 2015. But before his sentencing, questions and appeals start about whether it was a fair trial. Juror 12, John Lorraine's text messages with family and friends about the case during trial, the center of attention. We're now learning from the Court of Appeals decision, Lorraine sent and received hundreds of text messages about the case. A lower appeals court first finding the text did deny Newlander a fair trial, and soon after, Newlander walks free from prison on bail. Now, the Court of Appeals upholds that ruling, finding certain texts were troublesome and inconsistent with the trial court's repeated instructions not to discuss the case. And in order to hide her misconduct, the Court of Appeals judges found Lorraine lied under oath to the court, deceived prosecutors by providing a false affidavit, and tendering doctored text messages. While questioning attorneys on both sides during oral arguments in Albany last month, the court was very aware of the precedent their decision could set. But they note Lorraine selectively deleted other text messages she deemed problematic and deleted her entire internet browsing history and could not explain why. Now, it took about six weeks for the Court of Appeals to make this decision, and it was unanimous. And they also wanted to really make it clear the importance to them of juror honesty. DA Bill Fitzpatrick, very clear himself with me that he will retry Newlander, who remains free on bail, but still charged with killing his wife, Christy. Jeff, thank you. The next order of business is for Onondaga County Court Judge Thomas Miller to set a new trial date.